show ready to go. Thank you. Ooh, it's quite... So thank you all for having me today, and thank you for joining me for Mastering IoT Telemetry Data. So I'm Jay Clifford. I'm a developer advocate for Influx Data. In my past life, I was a sales engineer for industrial IoT solutions. I have a passion for autonomous and vision-based projects, and I'm driven to make IoT accessible to all. And my belief is that industrial IoT success belongs to the domain experts. That's extremely important. So I come from Influx Data. And if you didn't know, Influx Data are the founders and creators of InfluxDB, the open source time series database. So here's just a quick glance of our company. Uh, the main thing I wanted to highlight there, our open source project has 705,000 deployments in the wild. So you can see people are using it daily, uh, and we get updated daily on their use cases, which is you know, an incredible, incredible experience when we look at our online community. And then, of course, we have some big customers within you know, Google, Cisco, Tesla, Siemens, PTC, all use the InfluxDB product as well. So we've got a lot to cover today. So hopefully that you can sort of see that on there. Um, I'm going to cover it in four parts. We're going to talk about a growing problem. And you'll come to that in a second. I'll talk about InfluxDB in a nutshell, just give you a brief idea of what it is. We'll talk about the tools that's included within InfluxDB to analyze and act on your telemetry data. And then I want to give you an update on where InfluxDB and the Things Network's integrations are at and the work that we've been doing for this event. So the growing problem. Now, in my previous job, I was guilty of it. When I was designing industrial IoT solutions, my priority of my job was take PTC Kepware, connect it up to a few machine devices, stream that data into InfluxDB, give them Grafana, and go, good luck. And that was the end of my job. When I joined Influx Data, they said, OK, well, you've got all this IoT experience. We want you to take that with the Things Network and build this plant monitoring tool. Keep it simple, no industrial machinery needed but we want you to drive real insight with that data. And I was like, huh, all right. So now I need to actually learn everything about InfluxDB and what InfluxDB can actually do to convey basically analog sensor data, temperature, humidity, moisture, and convey real business insight with that data. And so what happened was is as we expanded this project, more and more people internally within the company and also in the open source community took part. And that's anywhere from developers all the way through to CEOs and C-suite executives who just wanted to measure the health of their plants. When we're dealing with C-suites and we're dealing with product managers who maybe don't have the level of technical experience as developers, they want to see in instant insight into their data that actually tells them what they need to do to create a real change. So what I'm going to show you with InfluxDB is how we can drive and generate that real change all from within InfluxDB. My, my main takeaway from you here is that databases should evolve from not just being a repository of data to providing real methods of analyzing, acting, and performing on your data before you use it in your own applications. So InfluxDB in a nutshell, it's a time series database from the ground up. So it's not relational, it's not a document, it's not a search. It is a dedicated time series database. There's quite a few out there, and it is the fastest growing type of database out there. Where the InfluxDB differs from its competitors is our main focus is the time to awesome, we call it. So it's a focus on making sure you have the tools available to you to work with your time series data in an effective manner to drive real change in your applications. So what I like to do is I like to create a dev burger. Marketing will kill me for this one, because this is definitely not one of their slides. Um, but I just think it's a nice way of outlining everything that InfluxDB is. So you have InfluxDB Cloud, which is our SaaS offering. That's on Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. Then you have Enterprise and OSS 
which can run on just about anything. So that's on Linux, Apple, Windows, Docker. You have Helms for Kubernetes as well. Features, on top of the database, we have dashboarding, tasks and alerts, which we'll get into, a GUI, and a functional data scripting language called Flux, which is really important. At its core, it's all built on Go. It's extremely fast. We can in ingest around about 250,000 data points a second. We're about four times faster than NoSQL databases and about five times more efficient at storing data than NoSQL databases. And our uses vary. So in this, we're talking IoT and industrial IoT, but they really cover a large demographic of use cases. So to get to uh, the meat of the presentation and what I wanted to discuss with you today was InfluxDB tools for analyzing and acting on your telemetry data. So InfluxDB comes with a tool called Flux. This is our functional programming language. Now, I didn't call it a query language. It is a query language, but it's vastly more than that. So Flux runs server-side. It runs directly on top of InfluxDB and provides a whole suite of programming packages for you to analyze, modelize, and visualize your data. It's more akin to a programming language than it is something that you'd be used to when using something like SQL. So for instance, if we look at this example here, this is just a basic example, you can see we have access to variables. So we can access data and store them in variables. We have the ability to do common query-based database functions such as joins. And we also have the ability to filter and aggregate our time series data in literally one line of code. And that's just some of the basic, basic commands that you can do with Flux. And what I want to do now is dig into how we can use Flux to analyze our analog raw data. So the three ones I wanted to cover today, and these three were the, the ones I started with, with the project. Um, and we've evolved from there using Flux. So with Flux, I basically had four different sensor types that I was dealing with. I had temperature, I had soil moisture, I had light, and I had humidity. And I was like, hmm, OK, well, the easiest thing to do is dashboard all of these raw. I've got it, great. They're all dashboard, that's good. But what am I really telling my user here? OK, so the temperature is staying constant at 22 degrees all day. Great. Like, but what I really wanted to do was go that extra mile for those people that didn't want to read a temperature sensor all day and try and work out if their plant's OK. And so this comes to the first feature that you can do in Flux, determining state. So within this example, let's focus on our moisture sensor. Suppose we have a predefined moisture level for our plant that we store within InfluxDB. Let's say our plant is expected to be within a range of 40 to 60% saturated with moisture or with water and for it to be healthy. What we can do is we can use Flux to compare the actual moisture to the current expected moisture and start deriving new meaning. So essentially what I can do is I can map new data into a new column, a new field is what we call it, and I would call this new column status. And this status column allows me to start doing some really interesting things, starting to calculate time in state. So before I move on to time in state, the last thing I want to say in determine, determining state is the concept of you can apply this logic to just about anything. So we're talking about plants here, but a great use case here is let's talk about a factory floor. We've got a CNC machine or a robotic arm. Say we're measuring vibration. We know the vibration of that machine at a running state is within this quantile, within this list here. This is OK. Anything without of this range, we consider that to be a potential fault with the machine. So with Flux, we can really show we can evolve from looking at plants to also look, applying that same logic to looking at industrial machines as well. Moving on from there, let's have a look at time and state. So now we've developed a column. 
that has the status. So let's say our status is plant is healthy, or so maybe plant is thirsty, plant is okay. That's our status. Okay, thirsty. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not a great creative when it comes to names. Um, essentially, what we can do from here is we can use a function called event in state. And what that does is it calculates from the state column how long that, that state has occurred throughout, say, 20, the 24 hour period. We can then take that time and we can run other mathematical calculations through that time. So one of the easiest ones that was really easy for our C-suite to understand was, well, OK, if I know you're calculating this over a 24-hour period, give me a percentage. I want to know how long in a percentage that my plant was healthy and then my plant was upset. And, and so that's exactly what we did. We derived new meaning from that data. And we said, OK, well, your plant is sitting at 60% happiness through the course of the day, and I have no idea what you're doing to your plant for 40% of the day, because it should definitely not be that happy. So just adding intelligence again to your data before we've even taken it away from the, like, from the database. And lastly, from there, we evolved into anomaly detection. So you've got to imagine that the, basically with the fleet here, the more plants we gained, the more data we had. What we have included within InfluxDB is simple algorithms to allow you to detect anomalies within your data. We call this medium deviation average. Oh, mad, medium, yeah, let me get the name of that right. Mad for short, but essentially what it is is a, it detects deviations from the pact. So if you have equivalent plants and one plant is acting abnormal compared to the rest of the plants, median absolute deviation, thank you, sorry, there we go. Um, and this basically allows us to say, OK, well, this plant is acting weird compared to the rest of the other plants. And you can imply that same logic to uh, machines as well, especially when we look at our vibration example. So as well as this, we were also measuring the network when it comes to basically device networks when it comes to the things network as well. So you can see a dashboard that I've created using Flux and our inbuilt visualization tool which monitors RSSI, SNR. We look at correlations, correlations between them. We look at location and geo data, geotemporal data. So all of this can be modified and customized within InfluxDB and even visualized within InfluxDB as well. And so I'm going to give you a, a link to the template. So we have a template system within InfluxDB. So if you want to use this template out of the box, uh, you're more than welcome to to gain the same visualizations here. We're all about sharing in open source. So yeah, all of this stuff will be available to you. So lastly is acting. I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time on this because there's a lot of tools that do it. So the basics of acting is alerting. So this is us going from reactive to proactive. Say our moisture level drops below 30% and we were going to trigger an alert to say, Hang on, our plant is like our plant is is thirsty. Give me that. Give me a give me a notification. And you can do that with a variety of tools. And with InfluxDB, we have integrations into PagerDuty, REST, uh, Slack, MQTT, which I'll get onto in a second. And we also have inter like integrations into Twilio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like like lots of other platforms. Where it becomes interesting is where we derive a control loop. The control loop allows us to drive real process without human intervention back. And we've actually deployed this with one of our colleagues, one of our engineers at Influx Data. So you can see in this diagram here that we're collecting our sensor data from our plant. That's going over the things network. It's being published into InfluxDB. We use a Flux script that we check. So basically, Flux can run as part of a task, and that runs every, say, every minute, every second. We check the data, and we can actually send a command from REST back to the things network and drive a downlink message back to our device to trigger water to be irrigated back to our plants. So we're really trying to actively pursue proactive maintenance here rather than have total human intervention. So lastly, what I wanted to discuss was where we're at with InfluxDB and the Things Network. 
Recently, we've just released for InfluxDB Cloud our native collector. This is a fully-fledged MQTT client that sits integrated into our InfluxDB Cloud, which allows you to connect directly to the Things Network Broker, so you can collect your data without needing any server-side agents to do so. We still have an agent tool called Telegraph. We maintain that. That's also another great tool for collecting data from the Things Network. But this is for people that want a cloud-only solution. It allows you to pass JSON data, pass line protocol data, which is our language of choice, um, and send that directly into InfluxDB for storage. Next is the Things Network template. So this is a template I showed you earlier. So this is the dashboarding solution. So this was a little pet project of mine, so I built this myself. Any problems with it, you can shoot me. That's OK. I will fix it. I am the first line, second line, and third line support for it. So I will, I will look after it. And lastly is use cases. So you know, I want to put our money where our mouth is. And this isn't just a pet project that we have internally. I want to show you a customer that's using this in a, in a practical sense too. So SPIIO uses a, a similar use case for watering and irrigating golf courses, living walls, plant systems around the globe. Really awesome company doing some really interesting things with data. And they use InfluxDB as the backbone for their platform for storing their telemetry data, deriving that insight, and then acting upon that data, driving that data back down into their sensors so they can actually water or notify maintenance staff that this needs to be done. The last thing I wanted to do was actually plug a talk later today. So Mike is a good friend of mine. I've been working with him on the community for quite a while now. And he's got this amazing project that he's working on in the UK, where he's using LoRaWAN sensors um, to essentially protect birds of prey and wildlife and monitor, I don't want to steal too much of his funder, but monitor traffic going through, basically going through parks. So really, really awesome talk. I, won't, I don't want to take any more away from it, but spoiler that he also uses InfluxDB in his use case. And so what next? So during the event, we are positioned at booth A06, just straight down the bottom. You shouldn't miss us. It's a beautiful event. You don't get lost in this place, which is great. Um, and just a shameless plug for myself as well, I'm doing a workshop tomorrow. Um, so essentially for the workshop tomorrow, we'll be building exactly what we've discussed here today. I've got a plant with me, I've got the IoT sensors, I've got the Flask application services, I've got the Things Network set up. So we will go, we'll try and do it in 45 minutes, but we will go from start to finish, from collecting data from the sensors, all the way through to visualizing that data and visualizing that data on the network. So really trying to put my money where my mouth is and say this isn't all just theory. So if you're interested, bring your laptops along. You can get stuck in as well. Um, it should be a fun session. And lastly, let's talk about after the event. So as a DevRel, I would be not fortunate enough to plug our community enough. So we have 10,000 developers strong within our Slack. Uh, we also have our discourse forums as well. And we've recently launched InfluxDB University. So this is a free online course set that allows you to learn InfluxDB and all of its tools and functions from the ground up. Um, and allow, gives you a really good start within the platform. You can also earn merits through Credly. And you can add these to your LinkedIn's, your email footers. I like to wear them like a scout badge of honor. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, and really show that you know, you're really stuck in with the time series world. So really great courses, all done by teachers internally in Influx Data, but also externally as well. We also do live training events. So if your company's looking for a live training event with Influx, just reach out to us and we can have that conversation. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I guess, yeah, any questions? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah? Or is that allowed? Yeah. I think we might have time for one question, but I don't have a microphone with me. <laughs> so, uh, so I have to uh, repeat it. Does anybody have a question? 
Any questions? And otherwise, they can they can find you afterwards. Absolutely, as well, right? stunned into silence. That's all we want. So. Well, I would love to, love to use uh, InfluxDB for my own personal prep project, my smart home. Yes, so absolutely. I'm, I'm wondering if you guys have any uh, connections with uh, home assistants by any chance. So we do. So our CTO, uh, Dean, is actually using the integration with home assistant. And uh, he's basically sent his data about his boiler off to his provider because oh, he's really? realized that the sensor is now broken because the data is basically trailed from what it should be down. Yeah plummeted and he's like, hang on, well, let me give you all of this data in this dashboard from Influx and, uh, and show you what's wrong. And they're like, huh, this is uh, the most detailed data we've ever had <laughs> exactly. over a, a problem. So yeah, it's really that's, good. Uh, that's absolutely amazing. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to yeah. maybe not having exactly the same issue as, <laughs> as your CTO, but, uh, but playing with it my, uh, myself for sure. Fantastic. Give, uh, give him another round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheap pleasure. Thank you.